So leaving Georgetown Kid Harbor, we headed on the inside of this Elizabeth Anchorage. And we're headed up here to Cave Key. We chose Cave Key because it's a good distance to get in a day if you have a kind of a late start. We can get in there by four o'clock in the afternoon to um, manage that cut and then find a decent anchorage. Just enough daylight left to do that. Okay, our next hop was from Cave Key up about 30 miles to this Cambridge Bell Island, so-called Conk Cut. So um, again, the wind was southeast light. Um, we were able to use a spinnaker for about 20 of those 30 miles. Beautiful anchorage up here at Bell Island. There was a it is private island with a house way up high on the bluff, kind of overlooking the whole anchorage area. We ran around the dinghy a bit. Cambridge K near our anchorage. Both are in the Exuma K's Land and Sea Park. A hike on the southernmost trail leads to the Sound and to Honeymoon Beach with a spectacular view of the ocean and conch cut. Right off of Honeymoon Beach is a magnificent coral reef called the Coral Garden which visitors can snorkel. Got approached by the game warden or the park warden at the National Trust. Three guys on board, a really nice aluminum chase boat. <laughs> so uh, they wanted $19 for anchoring. So anchoring fee there, not a big deal, but uh, they also maintain some mooring balls in that area, which we did not use, and they're about half again as much money. So anyway, um, that was a nice little trip. It, again in the sound, deep water, and pretty straightforward approaches through the cuts. A little bit of current in these cuts, but pretty easily done uh, under power. So that's the story there. So leaving Bell Island, we went out the same channel we went in, went into the sound, headed northwest with basically a southeast to east wind. We did use the spinnaker for a lot of this 24 mile trip.
cleared wax key and then back into Norman's. So took the sound channel in and anchored um, probably a couple hundred yards away from the DC-3 wreck. Highly tidal, but otherwise a safe anchorage. So that's the story with Norman's. We spent two days there. We anchored there for a couple days, very tidal. You're swinging back and forth with this big tidal current from the sound from the bank. And then um, kind of got tired of that, so we went out on the bank side, cleared all this Norman spit shallow stuff, went all the way out here, pretty sloggy, salty, wind-driven um, white caps. And then we went up here and anchored close to shore on the west coast of Norman. So we had excellent protection from the east and we spent a night there. The run to our second anchorage on the west coast of Norman's K was a sloggy, salty one. We headed to Highborn K and anchored on the west side, north of the marina for protection from the winds that had clocked around to the east. It was nice to get out in the inflatable and visit the beach and do some snorkeling on the reef on the bank close to the shore. Now we're going to talk about getting from Exumas back home via Nassau and New Providence Island. So, Highborn Key is a very favorite jump off point here and very well traveled across the Yellow Bank, across the uh, fairly shallow shoals up to the southwest point of New Providence. So what we did, we were all excited about flying the Spinnaker. But unfortunately, the wind that we had, which was maybe 10 to 15 knots, was directly off our stern. So just motoring, so we motored. We headed to our next stop across the Yellow Bank to the west side of New Providence Island. All right, welcome to Clifton National Park right here not too far from the power plant uh, they call it Jaws Beach I said why do they call it Jaws Beach there's a lot of sharks it says oh no they filmed Jaws here so, okay there you go we're at Jaws Beach so Jaws Beach has a government dock with no planks so it's totally useless no seawall well nothing that would support life with an inflatable boat that's for sure but we, it's got a nice sand beach we can just beach it but I would not leave the boat there just for drop off and pick up Our daughter Grace meets us at Jaws Beach. 
The next day we proceeded in calm winds along the length of the south coast of New Providence Island in 12 feet of water dodging hundreds of spectacular coral heads, the tops of some reaching as high as 4 feet from the surface of the water. Our destination was a lost ocean oh, hole. One this has to face in, but then my my rigging is going to be on the outside. Why don't you put your harness on and we'll just try it on right here. Okay. This is going to be your right hose. Yeah. Sure, your right. When we arrived, we donned our diving gear and went for a dive. starts in 40 feet of water and reaches depths of 2 to 200 to 300 feet. We obviously did not go down to the very bottom but stayed at about 85 feet deep. It was an amazing dive. The next day we did some snorkeling near our anchorage at West Bay. The Ocean Atlas underwater statue of a local Bahamian girl carrying the weight of the ocean above her was a pleasure to visit. It's the largest single sculpture ever to be deployed underwater. It was installed in 2014. The Virtuoso Man is another work of underwater art of a man on his knees looking out into the future with a staff in his hand. It is intended to draw attention to the wiser and older generation. We then explored the cliffs at Clifton Heritage Park using the dinghy. This, these cliffs were located near the Atlas Underwater Sculpture. Next, we grabbed our dive gear and dove two wrecks close to West Bay Anchorage. The first is named Tears of Allah. It was confiscated by the local government and later sold to film producers. It lays in 14 meters of water and it has served as a set for a James Bond film.
and next was the David Tucker wreck. It's a 28 meter steel hull frame and it was used by the Royal Defense, Bahamas Defense Force as a patrol boat and it was scuttled in 1997 as an artificial reef. After one last dive on the BBC wreck, Grace left for home and we proceed on to find more adventures in the Bahamas.